So this is a Mari tutorial. This is Mari 4.0. And I wanted to make this tutorial for new Mari users. If you're new to Mari and you're lost, hopefully this tutorial will help you get up and running quickly and should resolve the common issues that run into uh, new Mari users. So what you're seeing is I have it set up so that it's a dual monitor screen. And I'm trying to mix it together so that you can see both monitors at the same time. And on the right side, I have my menus laid out this way. I would advise you to lay them out the same if possible. Uh, you have your shaders menu. You have your channel menu. You have your layers menu, the painting menu, and the image manager, which will supply all your images. And Basically, on the uh, left side is just the viewport that we'll be working in. So, um, yeah. So, I'm going to assume that you your model is imported and that you know how to have a UV map applied to your model. At this stage, you could go to your UV panel and make sure that there's a UV map applied. If there is, then great. Okay, so to eliminate any kind of confusion, I don't want to have anything, um, any extra channel maps uh, in the channel menu if we don't need it. So we're going to um, start with a AI shader. If you don't, um, if you have one, just delete it and start with a new one. But we're going to go down to um, the add button and we're going to select a standard AI shader. And if there's any channels that are attached to it, just um, delete them. So there should be nothing in your channel's uh, palette. So now we're going to come down to the channel. As long as the AI standard is selected, uh, we're going to go to the plus and we're going to create one. Because what I want to do first is cre create the scales um, uh, across the uh, tail, and, you know, maybe the body section first. And then we'll color it. So uh, for now, I want to just do the displacement map. So let's go with, uh, I'll call that uh, large scales. And we're going to keep it at 4K. Uh, you could select any one you want, but 4K is a good start. 16-bit uh, is fine. We'll leave everything as default. Great. Okay, so now in our channels menu, we have just the large scales that we're going to use as our displacement. Now, just like in Maya or Max, the shader that we have comes with inputs, comes with diffuse color, uh, all, all the um, properties that make up this shader uh, you can access and you can attach images to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this new blank channel into our bump map because we're going to be painting a displacement. So just come down to the bump map and click on it and select the, basically the only one that should be in there, which should be large scales. Okay, so now we have the blank um, channel map applied into our shader and we're ready to go. Now, I'll get into the layers in a second, but for now, what we're going to do is create a new layer. I don't want to be painting on the base layer at this point. So I'm going to click on plus and start with a new layer. And we're going to call this um, the main pattern, if I could spell right. Good enough. So I want to make sure that I'm selecting that layer that I'm going to be painting on and make sure that I'm on my channels. Great. Now I'm going to bring in an image. Uh, I'll start with a frog image. Give that a second. And I'm going to just use the control shift to scale down and shift to move it around. Control to rotate. And once I'm ready, I'm going to start painting. Just make sure that you're on your paint plane. 
it'll automatically be selected for some reason if you're on paint. Uh, you won't see your image, but you need to make sure you're on paint crew. And now begins the paint processing. So now I'm going to rub in that image and you might be alarmed at first and say, well, where is the image or the bump map? And the reason for that is because if we go down to the bump properties, you'll notice that on the bump properties, it's set to a very low value. So I'm just going to move this image for a second so we can see as I increase the weight, we can now see the bump map more clearly. Now, I haven't baked it in yet by hitting B on the keyboard or moving my camera. So it is not, I'm not committed to this image just yet. Uh, so I can still move the image around and, and continue to paint. Now, if I decide I don't like it, I could just come down to here and click this and this will just erase the paint buffer and I can start over again and just continue painting the way I like it. Okay. So let's call this pattern good enough for now. And we'll use this as our sample. So now I'm going to hit B on the keyboard to bake it in. Or I can just rotate my camera. And now it is baked on there. Now the one thing you might notice is you, you might start seeing this stretching or uh, tearing. And basically what that is is just the projection um, being distorted uh, around the back edges of the model. Now you can fix that by going over to the painting menu and turning on the edge mask. And if I have time later, I'll go over it, but use the edge mask on to correct that. So now that we have the bump pattern, and let's say this is gonna be the displacement map that we're going to export, let's say to ZBrush, in case you want to extrude the details instead of sculpting the fine details in ZBrush, you can just extrude them through this displacement map. All right, so now I want to start applying the color to the tail, which will be uh, several layers of different colors that we will build up. So let's come down and create a new channel. Let's call this uh, color scales. Okay, so then there's my color scales. Now, same thing with the lodge, uh, the displacement. The displacement, we created one layer so far, which contains our main pattern. <clears throat> well, we just created the color scales that we're going to be doing our color on. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a, another layer, and we're going to call this, how about um, cracks? Because we're going to just paint inside the cracks. So while this layer is selected and we make sure that we're on our channel, it's important to understand that you need to be on the channel that you're planning on baking in or working on. If, if, you're, if you want to create the paint, you want to make sure that you're on the paint channel. If you want to create the bumps, you want to make sure that you're on the bump channel. And this is basically where most new Mari users go wrong. They're sometimes on the wrong channel as they're working and then they don't see their result and it's because they selected the wrong channel as they work. Okay, so now that we have our color map created, I'm going to bring in a new color that I would like to use as my uh, first color pattern. So I'm gonna bring it in and I'll scale it down. And let's say I want to start painting on this. Now, again, make sure that I'm on my uh, color map and that I'm on the right layer that I would like to record on, which would be my cracks. And I'm going to start painting now. So now 
you start to paint and you realize that you don't see anything. And then you go into panic mode and you say, I'm on the right color channel and I'm on the right layer. So why don't I see anything? Well, that's because your shader doesn't have any texture input. So if we come up to the diffuse color, you'll notice that the slot is empty. So we need to attach our new color channel. So now if I just move this out of the way, you'll see there's my work. So I'm going to continue to paint on my bumps. But I don't want it like this. I want just the little cracks, all the little nooks and crannies. That's where I want this color to be filled in. I don't want it just painting over the entire thing. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the channel mask comes into play. Now, under the painting menu, you should have a uh, mask preview. And we want to make sure that that's turned on. And that should turn pinkish. We're also going to come down to the channel mask. And under the channel mask, we're going to tell it what pattern we would like to use uh, to just select which areas you want to paint in. So let's open it up and we're going to select our displacement, which is our large scales. And we're going to use this mask to define what areas should receive the paint and what areas should not. Now, you may not see anything, although you might see some little pinks around the edges. That's because my edge mask is on. But if you don't see anything, you got to make sure that you come over to the channel mask and turn it on. Make sure that there's a little green dot that goes on. Give it a second. Now, don't freak out if you don't see the mask right away. You might have to reset the settings or play around with the settings until you get it just right. Um, you can go over to the uh, reset and just make sure that you reset everything back to default. And then you could hit, I'm going to hit the invert. I'm going to hit the uh, curve editor. And I'm going to now play around with the mask settings until I get it pretty much the way I want, which would be um, right now, anything that's pink, you will not be painting on. Anything that's not pink <laughs> you, it will, is where your image will show up. So I'm going to just leave it like that for now. We're going to adjust it later in a second. So I'm going to shut my mask back off. And you can see already, wherever I've painted, it's already showing up in the nooks and crannies already. It's important to note that I have not baked this in yet. So, for example, I can still adjust the mask. Because I have not baked it in. I have not pre pressed B on the keyboard or I have not moved the camera. So, I'm not committed to the pattern yet because I haven't baked it in. So I have total control over this mask and I can con continue to adjust it, which means I could delete my pad and then start over again. So I'm going to paint again. Okay, and then I'm going to now adjust the mask and say, well, I, I don't want too much of that darkness in there. So I'm just going to keep adjusting it until I just see just a little of it like that. And now that I, I'm happy with that, I can hit B to bake it in. And now I can move it around and it's I am now locked into that. Now, if I go over to the uh, editor and adjust it, you're going to notice that it is not affecting the color anymore because I already committed to baking it in. And therefore, this mask is now no longer um, going to adjust anymore. And there's a good reason for that, which I'm going to show you in a second. Now that we have that, let's say that I want to paint... Uh, the bump areas, not the nooks and crannies, but the raised areas. Okay, so let's come down to the layer stack 
and let's create a new layer. And this one, we're going to name it, how about raised bumps. How's that for self-explanatory? So now that I have that selected, I'm going to bring in another color. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let me bring this. So I'll bring another color in. So currently, the mask is set for the nooks and crannies. So that will need adjusting once I apply this new color to it. It's important that I'm still on my colors map. And I want to also be on the new raised bump layer that I just created. And I'm going to start painting. Now, I'm not moving the camera. I'm not going to bake it in at this point. I'm just going to apply as much color as possible. Just so I can see the effect of the channel mask. As you can see, I'm painting over those same nooks and crannies I just did before. So I'm going to come down to my mask and maybe reset the settings. And now it's just all about changing the mask values until I get it to invert my original, uh, which was I did all the nooks and crannies. Now I want to adjust the mask so that I could just highlight all the bumps and raised areas, um, which will ju just keep playing until I get it. Okay. Okay, let's just say that. So now that I have that like that, and I'm, say, satisfied with that, I could then bake it in by hitting the B. And now it's baked in. Now, at this point, I have two layers. I have the raised bump, which I could shut off. And I have um, the cracks, which I could also shut off. Now, let's say the cracks, they're nice, but they're not dark enough. So I'm going to come down to the crack layer, and I want to apply an effect to it. So I'm going to come to Add, what is it? Add Adjustment Stack. And I'm going to apply a Brightness Lookup. And you should get this pop up. And if you uh, select the icon, you'll get the same thing. You'll get the uh, curve as well. And you can just adjust it as needed. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And just, just for sample purposes. Now, you can apply as many effects as you want. You can color, contrast. Just go down the list and you can just apply as many as you need. Okay, so let's start a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I want to make sure that this layer is on the very top. So I want to apply a new skin texture that's going to go over all of the layers. And it's going to basically cover um, the other two layers up and we're going to just adjust it as needed. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on that new layer. We'll call that uh, skin color. And then that over it. So as I paint, as you can see, it's not covering the whole entire tail as I wanted. And that's because the mask is still on. So I'm going to come down to the mask. Now I could adjust it to fill it in the way I want. Or I could just simply come up to it and just shut it off completely. Uh, and not even bother with it. So let me just take a second. Okay, so now the uh, mask is not affected, and now I can just continue painting and um, fill in the entire tail at this point. Okay, so now let's say I'm happy with that. Now again, I could turn on my mask again. And I could reset everything. 
and I could just play with the mask and get it just the way I want. Let's say, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to cover the whole thing, but you know, maybe like that. Okay, and then press B for bake, and we'll bake that in. Now, I can also take this a little a step further, and while I have the skin color layer selected, I could maybe adjust it to uh, an overlay, and I could blend it in better that way. And then I could just, uh, if it's too much of the effect, I could just bring down the opacity uh, on that layer. I'm going to leave it full for now. Okay. All right. So now what we have is we have the bump pattern we created. We created a couple of colors, three colors that basically, um, oops. So essentially we created this tail pattern with just three layers, three different um, images with the channel mask. And I also want to talk about the channel mask uh, in greater detail at this point. So uh, suppose now that we have a nice pattern that we like on our creature, but now we want to add more little details in the nooks and crannies, but not so much in the nooks and crannies that we have already painted uh, on our displacement. Like in other words, the underlining uh, pattern is the frog pattern, um, which is right now driving our channel mask with the large scales. But suppose I want to do now another pattern that I'd like to do some nooks and crannies in. Well, how do we do that? So the first thing I want to do is use a new pattern. So I'm going to bring in another image. Let's say this one. And this image now is going to drive the nooks and crannies, um, either the nooks and crannies or the raised areas. But I want to use this pattern for my channel mask. Okay, so let's go over to the channel menu and create a new channel for this new mask. And we'll name it something appropriate, like um, how about mask pattern two. Close enough. All right, good. So now that we have the new channel created, now we're going to have to paint the pattern on this tail so we can use it as a mask. So I'm gonna to have to make a new shader, uh, a temp shader for now. So I'm gonna go down and create a new shader, a new AI shader will be fine. It's just temporary. And I'm going to take this AI shader and then just apply into the bump map section that new mask pattern that we just created. So it's basically like starting over again in a way. Okay, and then I'm going to apply this pattern to the tail. And again, if you can't see it, you got to come down to uh, the properties, go to uh, the bump, and just raise up the properties until you can see the pattern better. Okay. So let's say we're good with that. Okay. So let's say we're good with that. And we want to use this pattern now to for the nooks and crannies. So uh, let's go back now. Oh, I should have named this. I'm going to call this uh, pattern two. So we're getting confused. Okay. So now let's go back to our original shader. Let's apply the original shader back to it. So we have back our pattern that we painted. And uh, so we're all ready to go with this. Now, what we're going to do is we need to have that pattern that we just painted. We need to use that and apply it into our channels mask. So let's go over to our channels mask and apply the mask pattern that we just created, the second mask pattern. 
and let's uh, apply that to it. So now the mask pattern now it will be taking on that new image. So if I apply preview, you can see that new image that we created is now coming through on the mask channel. Great. So I'll just shut that off for a second. So now we know that underlining pattern is underneath there. Uh, but now we want to make sure that we're going to paint on the right channel and layer. I mean, where do you want it? So uh, for now, it's going to be in the colors channel. All right, so I want to make sure that I'm on the colors channel. And on this color channel, we will have all our layers that we've created this tail with. So we should have the uh, the nooks and crannies, the the top layer, um, and the over skin layer. So I want to create a new layer, and I'm going to name this uh, the new pattern cracks. And basically, the new pattern that we just created, I want to make now dark cracks um, for the tail. So now we're on the right layer. We have the color um, map that we were working with. And now we can, instead of using an image and doing it as we did with an image, let's use color. So we'll just go down to uh, the color. You can hit P also, paint. And under the uh, colors palette, I'm going to select a dark color like that. I'm going to use that to start painting on top. And again, make sure that you're on the right. So we're on the color channel and we have the correct layer selected that we're going to paint on and we start to paint. Now you're gonna notice that the paint doesn't look so great. It looks kind of transparent and it's pretty much not the way we want it. But we're going to fix that. That's because the mask is still on. Again, I didn't bake it in, I haven't committed yet. I'm gonna go there, open it up. And I'm going to adjust it until I get that color just in those areas that I want. All right, so let's say we're happy with that. And I can hit now B for bake. And it's baked into the to the tail. And again, I could play around with the uh, contrast. I could go to overlays, and try an overlay on it and see how that works. Go through my blend modes. Uh, you know, maybe use this, go down on the opacity, get it to the way I want. So <clears throat> to recap, I mean, basically we were able to create several different layers in several different ways using the channel mask to create a specific look and uh, hopefully having these menus set up like this gives you a better understanding uh, of how Mari works and it's less confusion and I hope that if I can help one person get through Mari without pulling out their hair then my work is done. So thanks and if you have any questions or if I've totally covered this wrong, please let me know. Thank you.